The dry suit is probably the most important piece of equipment a technical diver can own. They are however not just for technical divers, sport divers alike can enjoy a good quality dry suit. The dry suit allows us to dive all year round in virtually any condition. You will suffer less nitrogen narcosis as your body is warmer and your dives will generally be safer and much more comfortable. It is however important to note that a dry suit is a piece of equipment. It's not just clothing. You need to learn to dive a dry suit, but courses are available. Dry suits are typically made out of one of two types of materials. They are either made out of a trilaminate, like this one here. It's a very durable material that cannot stretch. Or made out of neoprene. The neoprene ones are slightly weaker and are susceptible to cuts but they are still fairly strong. The neoprene suit, however, requires less undergarments. When you dive in the dry suit, the suit itself actually does not keep you warm. It only keeps you dry, so you still need to wear undergarments. Undergarments look something like this. It's a standard body suit made out of a fleecy type material that you wear and then you jump into the dry suit. The undergarment creates a layer between your skin and the suit which traps air. The air barrier is actually what keeps you warm. That makes a dry suit very adjustable. If the water is very cold you simply add more undergarments. If it's very warm you can just dive the dry suit with something very thin underneath. In order to keep you dry, the dry suit has a set of seals on the wrists as well as on the neck. This suit of mine here uses a silicon neck seal that goes tight around the neck as well as these silicon wrist seals that completely seal watertight around your wrists. Because the suit will trap all air, it's also very important that you have a chest inflator. In order to drive the chest inflator you simply add another low pressure hose to your regulator system and you have a button on the front that will inflate the suit. The suit acts exactly the same as your buoyancy device. As you go deeper the suit will shrink. You need to add air and the inverse is true when you go shallower. You need to dump the air. To dump the air out of a dry suit you have a valve on the left shoulder typically. The valve can be adjusted in order to let out all the pressure inside or just as required. By screwing in the shoulder you can trap a little bit more gas pressure and therefore stay also slightly warmer. This however is not recommended for beginner divers. Rather open the valve all the way. Dry suits can be quite dangerous at times. If the suit is overinflated, the legs might inflate and pull you out of the water. So it's very important that your trim is correct and that you've attended the necessary training course which will teach you how to get out of trouble if you make a mistake diving your dry suit. Multiple types of seals exist. These are silicon. They are field replaceable. All I need to do is pull these plastic rings out and I can repair my suit in the field. The same with my neck seal. I can simply pull out the seal and install another one myself in the field. You get into the suit and then zip yourself up using this waterproof zip. Very, very impressive piece of equipment. When purchasing a dry suit, the most important consideration is the size. If the suit is too loose, it will trap unnecessary gas, especially around the shoulder areas. It will become very dangerous to dive. If it's too small, you will simply not be able to move properly. Even things like the boots are incredibly important. Get a suit with soft boots so that you can easily maneuver your fins. If the boots are too big, 
will also not be able to swim the suit properly. The best suits are always custom made. A good idea is to go to your local dive shop and get measured properly. Measurements can be sent to the manufacturer of your choice and a suit will be made to your exact specification. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.